worked his entire life on the docks, you know, unloading ships. And during his breaks, he would read. He just enjoyed reading. And he kept a notebook with him. And then he would take notes and a thoughts, um, notes on his thoughts and ideas. And what he got particularly interested in is exactly these first two words here, mass movements and how they spread. And he looked at mass movements throughout all of, all of history. And what he came to the conclusion of was that mass movements are started by people who are true believers. In fact, the name of his book is called The True Believers. And then true believers then kind of bring in other people into the cause. And these are people who aren't necessarily true believers, but they really need some level of meaning or, or purpose in their life. Support. Yeah. But just so to support the cause, but they also need the cause to support them in life. In other words, without having some kind of a meaning or a purpose in life, you're just kind of like floundering about. And he discovered that this was the same. It didn't matter if it was a left-wing movement, communism. It didn't matter if it was a right-wing movement. That there were true believers and that the people tended to just kind of fall into line no matter what the movement was. In other words, people aren't inherently left-wing or right-wing. People are inherently looking for meaning and purpose. And if you're a person who can give meaning and purpose, well, you can get people to believe in, in almost anything. Like I'm thinking about how my, my social media feed right now is just filled with all of this stuff about, about Palestinians and how all the babies that are dying there and all that. And as somebody who has the perspective of, I've studied that situation for a very long time. In fact, my first lecture series, and I started off as a... As a uh, professor over at, South, uh, over at Pasadena City College. My first lecture series I ever gave to my students was about the justifiability of terrorism. And I studied, I've been studying that situation ever since. And those of us who kind of know the situation look at that and go, you realize this is bullshit, right? Like if you watch enough videos, you'll see the same kid die like three times. You'll see the same person die two or three times. I mean, doesn't it seem strange to anybody that a population as small as that, that all of these people are dying, and yet these things, these videos don't seem to really exist? It's complete horseshit. We know it is. But here's the thing. You don't know it if all you see is your, your, your Instagram feed lights up with, oh my God, a building has fallen, and there are babies who seem to be under the rubble. And then our heart goes out to that. We've completely forgotten the fact that just a few weeks ago, these exact same people invaded a, a music festival and murdered people and raped girls next to the corpses of their dead boyfriends and filmed the whole thing and went house to house murdering old people, specifically civilians, and, and recorded it on those people's own phones and then uploaded those videos of them being murdered and raped up to their Facebook accounts and then changed the passwords so that their families would have to see those things happening to them. We've completely forgotten about all of that. And, we've completely, and we have no understanding of even of why the whole thing is happening. But here's the thing. If you know why the whole thing is happening, you probably wouldn't be sharing the videos and commenting on them because you would understand that it's a very complex situation. And as somebody once said, you don't know what you don't know. If you don't know what you don't know, then you don't feel a particular need to get involved in it. Unless, of course, you look at your life and you realize that you don't have a deep meaning and a deep purpose or a cause to get behind. Like if I were to ask you today, what's the cause that you get behind? A couple of years ago, we actually were wearing masks, which any kind of passing understanding of the, of the science of that stuff, or even a passing understanding of the studies of those things told you, don't work. In fact, they make everything worse. We have pre-COVID studies about the use of masks to try to stop to try to stop pandemics, and we know it did not work. In fact, we know they make things worse. We have a study. We have, I mean, Stanford studied it and said they work in clinical settings because nurses change their masks, you know, 15 to 20 times a day. They change between every patient in a sanitary environment where everyone's constantly cleaning their hands. They don't work. In fact, they make things worse when you take it off to sneeze and you put it back on and you throw it in your car, we know that it actually made things worse. But that's only if you stop to study it. The true believers know what they're getting at, but it's the masses of people around who are not the true believers who are just like, what do we get behind? Masks. Oh, okay, well, actually, ten, actually first, first it was, what, ten day, uh, four, uh, 15 days to slow the curve? And then we're like, yeah, there we go. That's our cause. That's our cause. And you saw how those lines just got so divided that if somebody said, I don't think that's going to happen, though. I think after 15 days, 
they're going to try to extend this. Oh my God, you're a conspiracy theorist. And then those people, those, those divisions happen so dramatically where you can actually now start to attract people's political beliefs based off of the fact that they just ask the question like, do these things really work? Like, I don't know if anybody even knows where, I, you know, where the, the six feet between us, you know, the, the social distancing thing comes from. It's, it's entirely 100% arbitrary. The people who, who implemented it never said it was otherwise. They always said it's arbitrary because you had two different groups. You had one group, you had the World Health Organization, which said, nah, it wouldn't help anyway. You don't need a social distance. And then you had our national organization, which said, you know, 12 feet, I'm sorry, 13 feet, man, minimum. 13 feet between people, which is almost the height of this ceiling right here. So what they do? They split the difference and said six feet. A distance that neither side was happy with. But we saw that, and then businesses started putting things out. Why? Did they believe in it? No. But they got to do something. Why? Because we always feel like we have to do something. And yet how many times have you done something and just made things infinitely worse? That's what happens. And it isn't that people don't know that those kinds of things are going to happen. What happens is, is people get behind their causes because we need a meaning and we need a purpose. And if anything, I, I looked at what happened and I just, I sighed and smiled and sighed again because I thought, wow, people are actually going to fall into line with this. And I also smiled though because I thought, my God, do you realize how good we have it? Do you realize how incredibly good we have it such that that's our fight? Whether or not we put a piece of useless cloth on our face, like that's, that's, the, that's the extent of our problems. We're actually here fighting over which bathroom people are going to use. We're fighting over the definition of what, of what a man and a woman are. That's, those, are like, those are our fights. Those are the kinds of fights you only have when you've solved every other problem. But all of our problems aren't solved. Well, yeah, the perfect is the enemy of the, of the good. The perfect is the enemy of the great. But life is like a Jenga puzzle, man. You know, Jenga, you, you take out one little thing and the whole thing collapses, but you never know which piece it is. You keep trying to add pieces in there, the thing wobbles, and we're like, no, we can take away things and add things because we know better. I mean, not to be an asshole, but most of us can't even spell our teachers' names, but somehow we know better about how to reorganize the economic systems of the world such that we go out into the street. How many, you know, we, we, we complain about, about what happened to, to George Floyd did anybody read the, it says we cared so much. Did anybody read the autopsy report that was released last week about it? We know how he died. Anybody? I wonder if anybody who didn't read the report was out there in the streets protesting or was out there on social media spreading, talking about it. The guy died from a massive drug overdose. Does that justify what the, what the cop did? No. Did the cop kill him? No, the autopsy report says that. In fact, the coroner, the coroner said that, in fact, she's actually suing her, her department because she said that she was pressured into saying that it was a different cause. So, I don't know. Does that, does that racism exist? Of course. Is it the biggest problem of our life? I suppose if it was, we wouldn't be sharing things about Palestinians and Israelis and fighting over bathrooms. I suppose that we would actually be able to commit to a cause. But the fact that we jump from cause to cause to cause, if just look over the last three years, it'd be interesting. Take an inventory of all the causes that have been shoved down our throats. And yet, we still don't have Epstein's client list, do we? And if you don't know what that is, that's even worse. Because that's not that old of a story. You guys know this story? In short, there's a guy named Jeffrey Epstein who had an island where he would sex traffic ki people to kids, minors. And it was, and he was convicted of this, by the way. And on his island, his whole island was covered with surveillance cameras. Every inch of his island was surveilled. There's video of every single person and every single act that happened on that island. And who was on that island? It, you would be hard pressed. You would be hard pressed to discover uh, a politician, a business leader, an entertainer, who was not on his island over the course of several years. And all of a sudden, that guy gets arrested, finally. And he goes to jail and he says, you know what, I think I might turn over my client list so everyone knows who was on my island. And then the guy committed suicide. 
in a jail cell from his, from his bed. He hanged himself from his bed with a bed sheet. Yeah, while well, be on suicide watch. The day after his cellmate was taken out in a part of the prison where the cameras happened to not be working that one night, where guards happened to fall asleep at their post. Yeah, and those and the, and then they finally went went to his island, and all of a sudden those videos, nowhere, gone. Never, never, it might seem to have never happened. And his business partner is on the run. <laughs> and they end up catching her. She went to prison last year. I'm sorry, early, earlier this year or last year? She was convicted of sex trafficking. To who? To nobody. No clients. But they were sex trafficked. And the girls have, and many of the girls have, have said, oh, we know, we'll tell you who they are. Just one of them said that two days ago. Anyway, she died. Suicide. But don't look over there. Did you guys see what's happening in Israel? Which bathrooms are you using? Yeah. Really important stuff. Because mass movements happen when you can get people who aren't really invested in it at an academic level that they really believe in something. What we all believe is that, we all, I guess we all share one belief, which is that we all need meaning and purpose in our lives. And if you can get a mass movement going that gives people a promise of a meaning and purpose in their life, well, and what's the ultimate meaning and purpose in life? It's these spiritual things, gods and devils. But you don't really need a god. In other words, you don't have to tell people, here's your god to get behind. But what you do need is a devil. Do you know why your life is messed up? Because of them. <laughs> not because of you. Not because of you. Like, um, well, I guess I can say this because you're not my students, but um, you're probably going to find out why. Coming up, I mean, well, screw it, why not? Um, I can talk to so many former students, and I, I run into them in places, and they'll just tell me, like, oh, man, it's Scanlon. Oh, I haven't seen you in the longest while. How you been? And I remember the student from being a poor, you know, very poor student, someone who, of course, knew better. But I get along with them fantastic. I don't hate, I don't hate people. I, mean, I love them, and I want the best, absolutely the best for people. And they'll be, oh, man, I haven't seen the longest. How you been? I don't want to talk. I'm just like, hey, hey, I've been great, man. But could you just get my fries? So that's <laughs> and that's a real conversation that's happened. That's a real conversation that's happened. I was at graduation one, one year, and I remember I got really depressed because there was a guy who was just like, like yelling with his friends, we graduated, dog, we made it, we made it, we graduated. And like two years later, um, I ran into him at a, um, at a Taco Bell near my house. And I asked him how things were, he was working there, and I asked him how things were going. And he, yeah, he's, he's going to go to school. He's going to get things. And they almost, it's almost like sheepish, like, like they're embarrassed. Like, I don't care what you do, man. Like, yeah, I, don't, I don't like you or dislike you, depending on, on what you do. I have, I have friends who are, who are, who are professors and, 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 and business people, and I have friends who are, who are unemployed and drug addicts, literally. Anything in between, man. If it's, it's, it's your life, and all we can do is, is do the best that we can to prepare you for it. But it's amazing to me how many of us know right now I'm never going to need this stuff. I'm never going to use this stuff. You're right. You're never going to use this stuff because you're never going to know that you could have used it because, well, stop me if you've heard this before, you don't know what you don't know. Are you ever going to use algebra? Not if you don't learn it. If you learn it, you might use it. If you learn how to speak well, are you ever going to need to know how to, how to understand what people are saying? No. Oh. None of you have ever been in a relationship before then, have you? Try to figure out what somebody means to say. Try, try to understand what a person is saying. To be able to repeat back to them, okay, you're saying S, X, Y, and Z. Not to win an argument, because you never, ever win an argument with a, with a significant other. You will never win an argument with your boyfriend or girlfriend. You will never win an argument with your husband or wife. Because if you're arguing to win and lose, then, you've, then the relationship has taken a hit. And you're going to lose no matter, even if you win. What do you do instead? We try to get to the bottom of things. We try to get to the bottom of understanding. Maybe understand that we don't want the worst for each other. We want the best for each other. So therefore, that being the case, how do we get to a solution here? How do we kind of come to an understanding here so we can live together, love together? But there's the problem with any relationship. As soon as you introduce a devil, it gets in the way of actually coming to an understanding. Why is it that our lives go badly? It's because of them. It's not because I'm my own devil who sat in class and didn't do anything and was convinced I don't need this stuff to graduate, or convinced myself 
<laughs> that a modified graduation plan was a real diploma. Yeah. Oh, but it's just as good. No, it's really not. And you're not as good either. But here's the thing, you're not as good as you could have been. That's the problem with it. You get, we get ourselves used to believing it's okay for me to be less than I could be. But if you're going to be less than you ever could be, why on earth would you ever expect anyone to love you as you are? You want someone to love a low version of you? And would you want to love? Would you want to be in love with somebody who would love a low version of you? Because that means they're probably a pretty low version themselves. So maybe that's my answer then. Because maybe a misery loves company, and we don't want to elevate ourselves out of a fear because, well, geez, then we have to we have to find somebody who has also elevated themselves. And then if we do that, now we have a high standard to achieve. And that's gonna that's gonna be hard. Yeah. <laughs> What's, what's something that's worth doing that's not hard? You know, everything that's worth doing is hard. That's why we do it. You know, we don't do things because they're easy. We do things because we thought they would be easy. No. We do things because they're hard. And if they're hard, then that means that we've achieved something. And if we've achieved something, then we've achieved some level of meaning and purpose in our life. And if you're doing that, you simply don't have time to join mass movements. Because you're too busy kicking ass in your own life. Everybody who's out in the streets is part of a mass movement. They all have something in common. They're not at work. They're, <laughs> right? They're not with their families. They're not studying. They're not doing the things that would actually improve them. What they're out in the streets doing is, is supporting a, a small group of people at the top who are somehow benefiting from that. And they're using you as a way of saying, look at all these people we've brought together. And then they self-appoint themselves the leaders. Do you ever wonder how they say, like, so-and-so, a community leader, how'd they become that? Were they voted? Were they elected? No, people just kind of fell in behind them because they weren't at work that day. They weren't studying that day. They weren't at school that day. They weren't with their families and loved ones that day. And those are the things that we really derive meaning and purpose from. This is why, <clears throat> yeah, when I'll say it, I've already come this far. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've come this far. I guess I'll say this. This is why we have, like, teachers who who call you guys like our kids. These are my kids. You're not my kids, man. And that's creepy as hell to say you're my kids because if I say, if I say, and I understand that some people will say, oh, that's so endearing. But here's the thing, if you're my kids, then that means I'm responsible for raising you, which means I get to give you my moral standards, my moral guidance. I wonder how many of you would be okay with saying, ah, I get my moral guidance from Scanlon. Not good. Not good. Just like if any of you were my actual, if any of you were my actual children, I, there are some teachers here. I just think, holy crap! Imagine if you got your moral guidance from that person. Yeah, most of them are up on that third floor. I'll give you names if you want. And yeah, those are the same people, by the way, who take it upon themselves. Like, well, we have to do that because they don't have this guidance at home. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. And even if you feel like you don't. You do. You're learning something there. But I wonder how many of them would be in the same way would say, well, there's this guy down in the 1200 building. I would never want my, my children to be raised by him. So maybe we shouldn't be doing any of that at all. But that's what happens when you don't have meaning and purpose in your own life. When you don't have your own kids, you take over somebody else's. When you don't have your own thoughts, you take over and you adopt somebody else's. When you don't have a movement in your own life towards goodness, towards virtue, towards family, Towards your own beliefs, your own ideas, your own work, your own meaning, and your own purpose, you get out in the street and you hold up a sign to support somebody else's. So, get about the business of kicking ass in your own life. You won't have time for this stuff. And you won't even recognize any devils around. Because when you start to really understand that the worst devil is ourselves, that's the one who stops us from achieving. It's not them, it's not they. Are there people who don't like you? Yeah, probably. Could I name them by name? Not really, I guess I could. I, especially after this, I suppose I could name some. <laughs> but get about the business of kicking ass in your own life and you won't have time for anything else. But that's where you drive your meaning and your purpose. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms?